What's going on everybody? My name's Greg Peters. You are watching the Car Passion channel and today I'm gonna be playing with my rods. So what I've got here is a bunch of parts and pieces that all have to be assembled in a very specific manner. This is what the finished product is gonna look like. And I'm gonna do my best to assemble those things properly so I can ensure that when I push the accelerator in the Miata, I'm able to travel time. What do you say we get started? Now before I put anything together, I'm going to check my piston ring gap. Whether you're doing a stock rebuild or shooting for crazy horsepower, having the right ring gap is very important. If the ring gap is too big, you can lose compression, and if it's too small, you can straight up seize your motor and rip the top of your piston off, which is not a good time. So I'm going to check it. I had the machine shop file my rings for me and check the clearances, but I'm going to check them myself also and show you guys how to do it. If you are wondering how to file your rings, I've got an awesome video, in fact an awesome channel for you guys to check out, super underrated and really good quality stuff called Southern Hooning. I'll put a link in the description. They do KA24 and SR20 builds, so for you 240 guys, you'll probably like that. First, I'll take the top ring from my number one piston and put it into the number one cylinder. Just kind of slowly work it around until it's in like that. Now I've got a piston with one of the oil ring rails installed and again I'll, I'll show you how to do rings in a minute but right now I'm just doing a ring gap. So take a piston with the ring installed, put it upside down over that piston ring and just gently push it down until the piston bottoms out and what it does is get the ring inside the cylinder perfectly flat. Gently pull it back out and then bust out your feeler gauge. For the top rings in my engine I've chosen 17 thousandths and that's gonna vary based on what you're using your engine for. So make sure you're using the right ring gap. Take the 17 thousandths feeler gauge and see that it does fit in that gap. And now just for the heck of it, I'll take the 18 thousandths feeler to see if it's gonna fit. And it, it almost almost wants to fit, but it just, it just barely gets stuck at the opening there. So that's a perfect 17 thousandths ring gap. So I've got Supertech Pistons and Wiseco XX rings. And pertaining to the ring gap, it's going to vary depending on the engine, on the setup, on you know what you're doing, a bunch of different things. So make sure you get your right ring gaps. And all the rings usually are different gaps. For example, we got 17 thousandths, 19 thousandths, 15 thousandths. Don't just copy mine, but if you wanna know what all the tolerances are for my whole engine, I actually just put a new page on my website. It's the carpassionchannel.com slash VVT mega page. And it's got a complete parts list, all the specs, all the machine work that I had done in detail. So check that out if you fancy that sort of thing. For installing the rings, I'm going to put some oil into the ring lands and on all of the rings. I've seen it done several different ways. Basically what I do for this kind of stuff is I do a, a bunch of research, I look at a bunch of reputable sources, and then I, I pick one of those ways based on what makes sense to me. So a lot of times there's not specifically a right and a wrong way to do things. Certain things I, I feel like in the long run they really don't have a, a big effect. So that's how I'm doing it. If you think it should be done otherwise, leave me a comment below. that you face all the gaps on the piston is extremely crucial. And my Supertech pistons came with this little instruction set on where to face all the gaps. Now, it does not tell you which way the piston is facing, but it does tell you, give you the uh, piston pin center line, and then you can see little relief cuts on one side. Since typically intake valves are larger than exhaust valves, I'm gonna say that those are actually for the intake valves, and I'm gonna set my piston up the same way as in the diagram. And the oil control rings, I'm gonna put on by hand because it's it's a little bit difficult to use the oil ring pliers on these and they're so thin that it's, it's pretty easy. This is called the oil ring expander. And the gap is gonna be right over here. I'm doing this without gloves because I've got a lot more control over what I'm doing. So that's that, I'll wash my hands afterwards. The only thing you need to be concerned with on this ring is you can see where the ends meet up with each other. You don't want those to overlap each other and catch. You want the ends to be butted up just like that. Now I'm gonna install the very bottom ring. I'm gonna do this one by hand also. And just be very careful not to drag the sharp ends of the ring over the sides of the piston because it can scratch it pretty easily. And you just work it around until it's all the way in there. 
Now the next ring is gonna go on the very top of that groove. And just, just take your time with this, be careful. You don't wanna scratch anything. You don't wanna, you don't wanna bend the ring. Now the oil control ring is complete. You can see you have a rail on the top and the bottom and then the, uh, the waffle in the middle. Now I'm gonna install what's called the second ring and you have to be very careful how you install this because number one, it can bend, it can break, it can deform, it can damage the piston. And another important part is there is a such thing as putting these in upside down. These Wiseco XX rings have a little N and that is the, the side that faces up. And if you look extremely close, you can see the ring has actually got a little groove cut out of it. And you want that to face down, at least on the Wiseco XX rings, that's how they go. You really gotta follow the instructions closely when you're putting on the rings because you don't wanna put them on the wrong way. I've got my end facing up. I'm gonna drop these into my piston ring pliers, which I, I think I got them from Summit Racing. They're maybe 13 bucks. And this is, this is the way to put on piston rings. You don't wanna do these top rings by hand. You open it just enough to get it over the crown. And there we go. And same with the top compression ring there. Just like that. Now that the rings are all set up, I need to make the piston and the rod friends. assembly lube on it, it's time to install this clip into one side of the piston. Now this is one of the most not easy things in this whole assembly, so I'm gonna do the best I can to show you guys. I orient the clip like this, so there's a little bottom portion facing completely downwards. I'll start the clip like that, where I just have the tip of the clip in that groove, and then you kind of work it in a spiral motion. So it ends up like this. So just to show you guys what I'm doing, I'm putting the flathead in between the piston and the clip, and I'm prying it upwards like this while pushing down on the pin with my right thumb here. I'm gonna put the, the rag over the skirt so I don't mar it up. You can see as I pry the clip up, it gets closer to going into the bore. You wanna keep holding it with your thumb because the clip can pop out and, and fly into Never Never Land. Watch the edge of that clip. Just pops in like that. To make sure the clip's fully seated, just carefully kind of pry down on it. You can, you can tell if it's in or not. That, that clip's all the way in there. If you use this method, this is the part of the piston that you have to be super careful not to damage or mar. If you, if you, you know, move a little bit of the aluminum with the screwdriver and push it outwards, you can destroy your cylinder wall and your engine just is not gonna last a long time. So give a, give a nice careful inspection, make sure you haven't damaged this little edge of the piston there. And that's why you have to make sure that you cover it with a rag when you're doing that. To my knowledge, it doesn't matter which way the connecting rods face, but on my engine, I'm gonna make it so the manly on all four rods faces the front of the engine. And I can tell which side of the piston is the front from this little dot here. And even if you didn't have a little dot or some kind of indicator, you can usually tell by the valve reliefs, you want the bigger reliefs to be on the intake side. So I'll set my rod loosely in the piston like this, making sure it's facing the right direction. And started here. So that's almost seated. You don't want to leave it like that when you install it. You got to make sure that clips all the way in there. I'm going to take the end of the screwdriver here, wrapped in a rag. Now you can see that's clicked all the way into the groove and that is installed. All right guys, well now that the pistons and rods are assembled, they're ready for installation into the block, which you will see in the next video. I hope you learned something today. If you like the content, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.
back, back, back from the dead. Back, back, back.